indeed a uh, great pleasure to have you here. Congratulations, first of all, for the peaceful uh, could take uh, place in such mm -hmm. have you there. Congratulations, first of all, for that took place in Armenia. We were really impressed by what we saw that uh, the constitution was secondly Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great moment for the Council of Europe to welcome the Prime Minister of uh, Armenia, Nikol Pashinyan. Uh, we have had a very good meeting and of course I have praised the Prime Minister for um, what has happened uh, in Armenia, that uh, Armenia, the people of Armenia and the authorities completed a peaceful and democratic transition based on the constitution. By the way, Council of Europe was uh, heavily involved in um, uh, the work working out of the constitution. We are pleased to see that it has worked um, and that uh, elections in uh, December was uh, in a way the final act of this peaceful um, transition. Um, I would like to commend also the Prime Minister for the fact that he uh, is moving forward uh, rapidly with reforms, in particular in the judiciary, where also Council of Europe uh, stands ready to assist. We have uh, recently adopted the new action plan for Armenia uh, from 2019 to 2022. It's a very broad action plan, uh, building on the former one, and we will continue in the same way, namely working together uh, by bringing uh, Armenia uh, forward and to strengthen the institutions and the checks and balances in, uh, in the country, also in order to fight what is high on the agenda, I know, for the new government, namely to combat uh, corruption. So um, it is uh, great to have the Prime Minister here. I congratulate you with everything you have uh, achieved till now, and I can reassure you that we will continue to uh, uh, be an important partner. It is absolutely clear Armenia is a European country rooted in U European history and European values. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Secretary General, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to thank one, one more time um, Secretary General Youngland uh, for a warm welcoming. And yes, uh, we, we discussed uh, a wide um, a range of uh, bilateral um, agenda, and we stated that uh, during the revolution, um, Armenia proved one more time that it is really um, a European country. And um, uh, for that, um, uh, uh, what was very important, uh, it was uh, the statement that 
uh, democratic revolution of uh, in Armenia, the revolution of love and solidarity was fully uh, fully domestic uh, de domestic um, idea and uh, domestic political process, and no one foreign force wa uh, was involved in our um, uh, political processes. And that proof uh, one more time that uh, democracy uh, fully derives from our people's mindset, from our people's wishes. And now uh, there is no doubt that Armenian gov government fully <coughs> devoted to the uh, democratic reform agenda. And of course, uh, we need to uh, state as well that the um, um, uh, activities that Council of Europe um, um, uh, was um, was uh, doing in Armenia since the um, um, accepting Armenia as a full member of the uh, Council of Europe. Uh, that the activities uh, were very supportive for the democratic changes in Armenia. And of course now, when we can state that Armenia already is a democratic country, now also we hope and we need to, uh, for support from Council of Europe uh, because we need the, uh, that uh, huge uh, experience that Council of Europe uh, has uh, in um, implementing um, uh, and uh, succeeding in uh, democratic changes and establishing a real and institutional democracy, rule of law, um, freedom of speech, human rights uh, protection, um, uh, independent judiciary, etc. And we agreed that we will uh, continue to cooperate fully in, um, in uh, making Armenian democracy stronger and stronger. You know, I, I don't think that there, um, uh, there is a contradiction. It is, it is uh, an issue of, uh, of the uh, interpretation of situation. Because, you know, uh, our only proposal is to stop uh, to uh, threaten each other um, um, with force. We need that we need to stop to use um, the threatening uh, wording in um, relations between Armenia and Azerbaijan, between Nagorno-Karabakh and Azerbaijan. And our proposal is to prepare our societies for peace and not for war. And, uh, and uh, we, we hope that uh, our partners in Azerbaijan will address our call and when uh, they uh, will uh, do that, uh, we will have a completely different situation. Sorry, excuse me, no, we have no time for second question. Yeah. Armenian Public Television, hello, uh, Mr. Youngblood, I have a question for you. Uh, two days ago, the Council of Human Rights told that it is very impossible to visit uh, the, uh, the gray zones. What do you think, uh, what uh, practical steps uh, it needs to take to uh, real, uh, resolve this process? Thank you. Yeah, I have made a very concrete proposal on that. First of all, it is built on my principal position, which I've held for a very long time, namely that it is um, unacceptable that Council of Europe monitoring bodies and the Human Rights Commission cannot work in certain areas on the territory of Europe, the so-called gray zones, and uh, not going to Karabakh is such a gray, gray zone for us because we cannot, we are not able to work there uh, because it, it is being blocked. Uh, and uh, my proposal is that we should now look at the mandate of the Human Rights Commissioner, which is a very wide one, and that the Commissioner should have right to go every, everywhere she wants um, in the way she sees possible and that this should be underpinned by a political statement, let's say, from the governments of uh, Europe so that it can be possible. 
Of course, it would be even better if the monitoring bodies, the permanent monitoring bodies of others could do the same, but let's start with the Human Rights Commissioner, and it, it is for me self-evident that the Human Rights Commissioner should be allowed to work in a uh, non-political way, and her work should not at all affect our views on the status of these areas. Uh, she is um, entertaining, really, a humanitarian work, full stop, and it should be seen like that. Mr. Jagland, Mr. Prime Minister, uh, if you react, I would appreciate. So, um, do you have any new suggestion for Armenia, and what do, what do you expect, especially in this post-revolution period, from Armenian new government regarding to uh, human rights democratic reforms? Well, what I uh, have heard today, and I have seen it uh, previously, uh, f from the new government, that uh, the government has a reform agenda, it is committed to, uh, for us, which is very important, reforms in the judiciary. And of course, uh, it's important also to look at uh, how the opposition can work and how the media can work in a system of checks and uh, balances. And that is also the only way to uh, combat uh, corruption because we don't, if we don't have checks and balances um, by a parliament and by an independent judiciary and independent uh, news media, then we always get uh, corrupted. So what I've heard is that this is the agenda of the government, which uh, we, of course, will um, do everything we can to support. There is nothing to it. <laughs> <laughs> I was a spokesman of the <laughs> government. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, it, it is uh, it is the decision of the Yerevan municipality uh, to name one of the squares or in the city center of Yerevan as Europe Square. And it is decision, and I would like to pass this uh, this, uh, this someone as a souvenir to you. So we have Europe Square in Yerevan. Thank you very much. And it uh, underlines what I said at the outset, that uh, Armenia is a European country, has always been, and it is rooted in European history and uh, European uh, values. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. Thank you very much.